we're so glad you, everyone was able to join us today. Thank you for spending some time with us. <clears throat> um, so let's let's just see if anyone else. All right. All right, so um, we can go ahead and get started. Um, good morning. Um, thank you so much for joining us virtually today. Today, um, we're going to show you the many available resources um, that are going to be available for you and your students in the upcoming humanities course for fall. Um, when Dr. Jones and I first started um, talking about the resources available for SARE, never did I ever think that we were gonna be delivering this virtually, but I really thank you all for coming together um, and making this happen. So now more than ever, I know you guys are kind of feeling the shift um, to the classroom, moving to the digital platform, and um, I'm sure some of you are feeling the struggles or went through the struggle of how to keep them engaged in the classroom, and how to like how to hone them in and keep them um, up to speed with the content, keep them keep them going. So today we're really excited to show you the resources that are going to be available for humanities that are really going to capture your students in a way that they have um, really never really explored the content before. So um, so with that, we're going to show you Rebel, and it's going to um, bring your textbook to life. It has videos, true to skill enhanced images, panoramas, interactives, and so much more. Um, your students are gonna be planning their next trip to London to explore St. Paul's Cathedral. Well, I mean, I think we're all kind of um, itched to um, plan our next vacation, aren't we? So, so we're, it, once your students get into Ravel, you know, they're really gonna wanna explore it, explore it more and um, get excited about it. So we're excited to show you that today. Um, and thank you so much, Dr. Jones, for helping us facilitate today's training and getting, getting everyone um, on the call today. And if you can just share a little bit about what you liked about what you saw with the available resources and um, maybe a little bit how you foresee the students using um, Rebel in the classroom coming up. Well, I think the thing that really impressed me about it was that it really lends itself to multiple learning styles that it has the capacity to be all online, but that a professor who really wants students to have a paper-based book, they can have a paper-based book printed at a, at a significantly lower cost to them if, if the professor just is, is determined to do that. The book itself, uh, the pictures, the diagrams, everything in there has got expanded information about it so that students aren't just looking at a caption but it comes to life. And then there are a lot of readings and um, just a lot of options, I think, that come with this package that um, give you the opportunity to send students off looking at uh, many more different things. And, and it's all there. I think the, the big thing is it'll, it'll all be there in the Canvas uh, site. The, the minute that they get into class, the book is there. You won't be having them sitting there saying two weeks later, I don't have the book yet, which I'm sure we've all heard. So um, those were among the many things that really impressed me. Perfect, well, thank you for sharing that. So yeah, we're gonna dig deep into that and make sure that you and your students are all set for fall classes, making sure you're trained and, and ready to go. Um, so before we get started, we'll do some quick introductions so you all know who we are on the Pearson side. You have a, a great team that's here with you um, in, the, in your neck of the woods. Um, we have Terry Moore. Terry Moore is the Rebel Faculty Advisor for Liberal Arts. She's a native Floridian <clears throat> with over 19 years of teaching in higher ed. Uh, she's dual credentialed for um, Eastern Florida State College. She teaches both psychology and communication courses. Terry's used um, Pearson products in the past um, when we had MyLab. I don't know if any of you have used Pearson's MyLab before. And now she's continuing on with, um, with Rebel in her classroom. Um, she's been a freelance faculty advisor with Pearson for almost 11 years and making the choice just last year, 2019, to leave full-time academia um, for full-time employment with Pearson as a Rebel faculty advisor for liberal arts. So we're 
really excited to have her here today to share with you some best practices on Rebel. Um, we have Naomi Bahari, who's in Miami. I want to give her, everyone a wave. There's Naomi. Um, she's your um, digital support specialist, so um, really helping you get the most out of um, the Rebel platform and help answering any and all questions. She's the bomb. Um, we also have Misty Bittner, who's on the call. She's in your neck of the woods. She's in West Palm Beach. She can walk to your campus. Um, Missy is your executive director, so she is the one that really helps facilitate your students that are going to get day one access. So she's amazing and great as well. You'll meet her later. Um, we have Kendra Howard, who is your customer success associate. She'll join the call later and she's going to be one um, <clears throat> that we're hoping if you all will move forward to the next step of training, um, once the course is delivered, she will help you implement it into Canvas and set everything up. So between her and then myself, I'm Jen Stevens. I'm in Delray Beach. I'm your local sales rep. Um, I've been with Pearson um, over seven years now, covering all different disciplines and colleges all the way down to Miami, up to Indian River. But now, most importantly, I cover you guys and I cover Palm Beach State College specifically. So really excited um, to, to talk to you guys today. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Terry, you want to put the PowerPoint up? Yeah. <clears throat> Just a second. Okay, perfect. Um, and then, let's see, thank you. And you can just go to the agenda. All right, so we went over introductions. Um, next, we're going to walk you through the story of Rebel, why it was developed, um, the learning science behind Rebel. We're gonna walk you through what your Rebel course looks like. You all have access to your own individual Rebel accounts. So if you haven't already gone into that, um, we're gonna explore that today. And if you have gone into that, definitely um, pose questions throughout we want this to be an interactive session, so please ask us questions um, as we're moving forward. Um, inside of Rebel, we're going to show you all the available instructor resources, and we're going to talk to you about how your students are going to be able to access Rebel on the first day. Um, was there anything else that anyone wanted to add to the agenda? Okay. All right, so yeah, please feel free to ask questions throughout this session. Um, so we'll go ahead and um, move on to the next portion. Great. And uh, as Jen mentioned, we're gonna start by telling you the story of Revel. So Revel really is a revolutionary product in that it was based, as Jen mentioned, on years of learning science research that shows how students learn best. And that's why unlike traditional platforms where you might have the e-text in one area and then a separate button off to the side for their homework and yet another area for media, with Revel, students have one continuous and integrated learning experience where they read a little, watch a little, and do a little. And that's because when they were developing Revel, they found they wanted to make sure uh, to really reduce the cognitive overload of students and instead to really chunk out the learning in order to have incremental learning and then immediate application where students will engage with the material either with reading and then um, work with some short media or a quiz or another assessment to really reinforce their learning, to provide more of an interactive experience instead of just a passive one. And we've done tons of focus groups over the years since we developed Revel, and students really have embraced it. And one of the things they really love in particular is that they can use it on any device. They can do it on their computer, their iPad, their phone, and because of the responsibility and it will pick up wherever they left off on any device. They can even listen to the audio files on an Amazon Echo or a Google device. Uh, so because of the, um, these reasons and much more that you'll see now from Terry, um, we're, we're really excited for you to be using it and for your students to be using it this fall. 
thank you so much. And Terry, I will toss it to you. Yeah, back to the screen sharing. Um, so I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about yeah, using it and going inside it. And so what I'd like to do right now is really just take you inside the, one of the title, the title that you're talking about using um, or that you are examining today. So let me reduce this. And go inside this particular text. So this is the title, Sayer for Revel. Um, I wanted to just show you a few things about how this can be used to be really effective with students. And then I'm going to share with you some of my results. But I wanted to show you the ease of going into Revel and beginning to select content. Someone else is going to show you more of the instructor resources, but I wanted to show you sort of the way I've used Revel so that when I talk about it later in terms of the um, efficacy study that I did, you'll know what it looks like inside the course that you're using. Um, so the first thing that you would do with Revel is begin to select some content, um, begin to examine. I'm not going to do a walkthrough of how to do Revel, but I just want to show you some of the ways that I use Revel. So if I selected some content, for instance, chapter one, and I wanted to use everything in this chapter, or I didn't, I could eliminate something like maybe the shared writing. Um, I'm going to set a due date for this so that we can take a look at it today. And I'm going to publish it out to the students so that you'll get a full view. And once we have an assignment on the, you'll begin to see now the instructor's view that we have some assignments here. So we've got things worth certain kinds of points. Those are adjustable through your course settings. Um, you have a lot of customization for the point values of the quizzes or the assignments. You can change the point values to suit you, to suit your style. Revel was always meant to be a low stakes environment. And I think that the quizzes that are the module quizzes and the chapter quizzes that you'll see within the content, if you think of them as student self checks to increase their metacognitive skills instead of tests or exams, it's a much better way, way of thinking of Rebel. If you try to let Rebel be too much of the heavy lifter of the evaluation of your student's mastery, you can get into some problems because it really wasn't designed for that. It was designed as a low stakes learning environment to engage your students. Um, it really is not designed as a testing environment for you. I always urge professors to think of Rebel as the content delivery system, which is very effective and you're still the master of evaluating what your students have learned. Um, so for me, for my part, um, I use Revel to deliver the content. I assign all the chapter quizzes, all the module quizzes as learning tools for the student. I give Revel at least 15% of the weight of my total grade. And then in Canvas, which is my learning management system, I put the heavy hitting kinds of evaluative, evaluative assignments like a research paper or a midterm or a final, which are very heavy weighted assignments that let me assess if the students have mastered the material that I've assigned them. So that's sort of been my philosophy and it seems to work very well. Um, so once you've set the course settings to be the kind of point values you like, you would see the point values beside each particular module within this course. So this chapter has these modules the student will be able to clearly see on their view what's coming up and what the value is. Once you've set up your course, which is incredibly easy, um, you can set up a course for an entire term for a, you know, an, hour, an under an hour, really, um, if you're using the default settings. There are many things that you can use in here to customize and make this much more your tool. Um, and that will take some time as you go through it and decide how you want to use it. But for now, um, if you have people that are brand new to the system, or for me, in my part, I was doing all of the adjuncts um, in our online program. So I had to get some adjuncts up to speed sometimes on weekends. And in that regard, I was able to do it very quickly within, you know, sitting down for an hour, getting, to go, get, getting them to go through and assign everything for almost a full year or full term. So those are your assignments and how you would create them, which is very easy, but to me, the biggest benefit of Revel is this little grid here called the performance dashboard, the grade book. Now we created an assignment very quickly 
we can see that it's now due May 13th. If we open it up, we can drill down to every section and see exactly what's going on in that class. Now, obviously, we don't have any students yet, and I'm going to show you a class with some students so you can see the data a little bit. But for instance, beside module, if you see this little eye, it'll tell you that's interactive reading. When you scroll across here, you can see average time and average points earned. There's no points for reading, but I can see how much time right here my students are spending reading. And I know if they've read. I know if they're prepared before they come to class. And that is something I never could do. I always assumed that my students had not read anything before they walked into my class. Therefore, I became the giant shotgun that shot all the information out there for the entire chapter because I figured they hadn't read it. Never asked them to bring anything on Monday morning because I know they wouldn't remember to do it. Now I can go in here and say, look, 86% of my students have read at least a portion of the chapter or have a passing acquaintanceship with it. Um, and I can tell how much time they spent, which is also very fruitful when you have a student that will sit in a meeting with you and say, but I read all the time, I've studied and studied. And you go, well, no, I'm thinking maybe two minutes was about the most you spent on this. So you can validate you know, your arguments with your students that you're not spending enough time engaged with the material. You can see the quiz, the scores for the class, this was always really beneficial to me and still is because if I open this up, I can see the specific questions and where the students scored lowest because there will be a bar graph out here that will show you when the students have data in there. So for instance, I would pick the, the top three questions from their assignment that was due before class, the top three low scorers. And I would say, okay, these are the concepts my class is struggling with. That's what I'm covering in class today. I'm not covering the whole chapter because I'll bore the ones to death. That they got, most of them got 100 on those concepts. They got it themselves. Let's work on the things you really need to work on. I also have the ability in this performance overview of going per student. And I'm going to switch over to my class to show you. If I go to the student view, I can pick a given student. I can see very specifically every score she has had on anything. I can also see her last activity. This is so helpful in intervening with students early. And I can also give her an extension. We know we have hurricanes in Florida, so we can give an extension by, by class or by individual. But I can see if I've got a struggling student. If I go back to that student view, I can go down very quickly and see which of my students are not engaged. This is a student that I would send an email to. And I would say, you know, Lisa noticed that you weren't able to engage with Rebel last week. Is there something I can help you with? You and I know that most of the times this would be because they're slacking, um, but it does several things when I do that quick intervention and it doesn't take me any time. It lets the student know I'm watching, number one, and that I care about their progress, number two. It also gives them an opportunity if they are struggling with something, either in their personal life or with their technology, it gives me an opportunity to help. And I'm gonna talk in just a second about how good that is and the results of being able to do that little intervention because I started doing that and I had never done that before with my students. Um, so this particular function of Rebel to me was the thing that has just made all the difference in the world in how I teach, and how I intervene with my students, and then how I change my course up the next term. You know, for instance, if I consistently see that the entire class is missing a particular concept, if I scroll down here and say, okay, these are 40, 43 out of 51 of the students participated and they got an 83, ooh, this section right here was a 68. Um, they did a video quiz that they didn't do well on. What's the concept? Effective listening, wow. That's something that I may need to add a tool with next term. This may be a hard concept for students to get. Um, so this gives you the ability to intervene in real time with your students that week, that day. Um, it also gives you a chance to be a better evaluator of how effective the tools are working with your students and to intervene between terms. Um, so those are some of the just highlights of Revel how simple it is to get it started, how simple it is to get anyone else started on it. There's a lot of customizations that we can go into detail with you on if you're interested and we have time today, like adding a message to your students. 
Um, you can also highlight certain passages and send a note out to your students. So there's a lot of customization that you can do within Revel. But I want to move on to the results that I achieved because I, that's, that's my fault in being able to share that with my colleagues nationwide. <clears throat> So if I looked at, I wanted to see if there really was that much difference. I mean, I felt anecdotally that my students were doing a lot better. Um, and I really saw improvement in their interest. I saw improvement in their engagement in class, but I was teaching all three modalities. I was teaching online, hybrid, and face-to-face. -face. So I wanted to compare, and I wanted to do that for my provost. I wanted to compare my online classes to my face-to-face -face classes. So I was applying these particular four best practices and I did it over a three year period of time um, in all of those different kinds of modalities. And this was what I discovered my results were from doing this. But what I did was I made Revel worth at least 15% of their grades, sometimes more depending on the modality. Uh, for online classes, it was higher than 15%. Um, I made all assignments due prior to class. Um, so they didn't do it at the end of the term, uh, which some professors would prefer to do. They were due before each class. Um, I assigned the quizzes as practice for my heavy hitting exams. I assigned all the little internal quizzes within Revel, and I used that dashboard for intervention that I showed you. And what happened over a period of time using practice one, ensuring Revel was, with, was worth 15% of their grade. Over that four terms in three year time, in face-to-face -face classes, I increased the weight of Revel from 20% to 35%. The gains overall in my ABC rates were 6% over that time. I do not know who these children were in 2017. Um, <laughs> that was one of those classes, we've all had them, but they bottomed out. Uh, but there was a consistent increase beyond that particular class. In my online classes, it wasn't as much of a gain in terms of grades. It was a 3.5% gain in the ABC rate, which was still significant. When I started applying pra uh, best practice two, which was making the assignments due prior to class, um, and one of the ways that I checked this was I did something called ready, set, go questions. I mentioned that I would pick the three three questions from their previous week's work that they scored lowest on. And I would come into class and I would tell them you got, as long as it takes me to take role, you've got the questions on the board behind me, the same for three questions. You've got this length of time to get minimal extra credit points. So they knew coming into Monday's class or Tuesday's class, the first class of the week, they were gonna have a chance to get a little few extra credit points. They were extremely small points and they were going to be you know up on the board for just a few minutes so it did a couple of things it got my students class on time um, because some of them would literally run down the hall and come around the corner just are they still up and i go yep they're back there but you only got a minute then they would hold up their their answers on a clicker card i would scan it with my uh, phone and then we would launch the discussion with those three points that i knew the class was struggling with and it was great because I was suddenly engaged with students who were, by the way, 86% that first year, 86% of my students came to class having done something with their homework, some of that reading, at least with that before coming to class, um, which just staggered me um, because I knew that the national averages were anywhere from, say, they, they were saying 40 to 60% prepared. And I said, that's not in my classes. I'd tell you maybe 25% were coming prepared. Um, so that was pretty startling, but I was able to do that by using that best practice. Best practice three, assign the chapter quizzes because they prepare students for your high stakes evaluations. Taking tests is one of the best learning science ideas we have for increasing scores on tests. Take a lot of tests and you'll do better on testing. But again, remember, keep Revel as a low stakes testing, self-testing area. Do those high stakes exams on your LMS. So doing that, and this was where I saw the massive improvement, was in retention. I hadn't expected that. It really just threw that variable in for fun. And over that same four year period, um, increasing the value, I saw an enormous retention improvement. Um, so the ABC rates went up, the retention rates went up in both my online and my face-to-face -face classes. 
Um, and then when I started really applying that best practice for using the performance dashboard to inform my instructions and the intervention, to me, that intervention was what made the difference in retaining students, I think. Um, I found that when I went in and looked at that dashboard, examined who was, who was going, doing better, how much time they were spending, the points that these students were earning, and these are actually real students, so I've blocked their uh, names out. Um, and then going and sending a quick email or addressing it in class with it was an entire concept that the class was struggling with. That intervention gave that students that emotional connection to me. Um, lots of studies right now are telling us that our students do need to feel emotionally connected to their classes to persist. And we're all struggling with that right now because we're all online, at least for a period. How do we make that emotional connection to students? A lot of us don't want to do synchronous discussions or lectures. So this is one way of doing it in asynchronous time. Letting them know you're watching and care about their progress is enormous. And none of mine was synchronous back then. That was all asynchronous communication. So in online over eight terms, I increased the value of Revel from 30 to 90. Now, please understand that was a speech course that was 90% and their speeches were delivered through a, a, a particular application that was within Revel. Um, the gains in retention for my online courses were 20, over 25%. That was staggering to my provost because we were struggling when Sachs would come and ask us, how do you compare your face-to-face -face classes to your online classes in terms of retention, in terms of ABC rates? And we didn't have really any data to show that we were using something that was increasing this. And suddenly we had a way of showing them, hey, we increased our retention by over 25% by employing tools and using them effectively. And that was the trick, they had to be used effectively. So that retention really shot up. So face-to-face -face, over four terms, we increased the weight from 20 to 35%, the gains in retention were 13%, which kind of staggered me too, because I thought I was the rock star in the face classes. Um, I thought, you know, why would a tool make a, make a difference in retention for my students? Well, it engaged them, they liked it, um, I would ask questions on their final exam for an extra credit point. I would say, tell me what concept you got from your content that you remember and why. And that let me know about Revel a little bit. You know, were they retaining a concept that I thought was important and why did they think they were retaining it? So that gave me some good anecdotal information about how successful it was being as a tool. So the retention. So to wrap up, um, using Revel for at least 15% of the grade. It's, I, I always use it as an overall grade, um, with the exception of my speech classes where I use their speeches that are worth more than the overall grade. But I weight Revel at least 15% in my overall grade. I have the assignments due prior to my classes, and I assign quizzes, all of the little quizzes as practice for taking good big exams. And then I use the dashboard for that early intervention. And to me, this is the wow factor being able to quickly look at data. Um, I was in my labs before Revel, and it's a great tool, it really is, but boy, is it massive. There's so much data in there. And it was frustrating for me because I'm a qualitative person and I want to know more than just a whole bunch of figures that I don't know how to read. Revel put it in my hands, just the amount that I needed, but enough to be powerful and enough to use it powerfully. Um, we do have some efficacy studies if you were interested in looking at more detail of other professors who've done some more formal efficacy studies um, on this particular site. And Naomi or Jennifer are welcome to share these, um, these, these videos, this uh, slideshow with you after I'm finished. So that was pretty much um, my discussion with you on Revel and the success that I've had. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Question. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Well, so you must have some students that are using the textbook, the hard copy book. And so how does that work where students are going back and forth? They're, they're, you, they have the hard copy book. So they might, you might say, hey, I noticed that you only spent two minutes reading this chapter online, and they'll say, well, well, actually, I was using the hard copy. It doesn't so I did read. 
it doesn't count unless it's in the dashboard. So that's it's my, sort of my legal with them. They're welcome to have a hard copy, but they must have the access code. Yeah, but you didn't answer my question. What do you do with those situations? That must have crept up or did it not crep up? For it you? didn't crep up, but what I would have done, it never did because I just told them you don't need a hard copy for my class. I don't require the hard copy. If you want to have it for yourself, you can, but you have to do your work on Rebel. So but what about that? I've heard a lot of students, I've heard it students Students have told this to me. I've heard it directly from students and I've also have read it that a lot of students prefer hard copy books over online ones. Well, and they're welcome to do the reading because the reading is not graded. But if they don't go on Revel and do the quizzes, then the quizzes won't be graded. So, you know, to get credit right. for Revel, they have, the reading is not graded. And I, and I know some of the tools you're talking about do offer you the option of giving you a grade for the reading. So because it was never a grade or a possibility for a grade, it really didn't come up. So I think if a student ever said to me, yeah, I really am reading. And I'd say, well, I'm not seeing it online here. I would have said simply, good, I'm glad you're reading it, but it's not being successful. How are you studying? What ways are you using to study? Are you just rereading the chapters or are you checking to make sure you understood it by using these little self quizzes? Um, so we know that students would prefer to just reread re a chapter or do highlighting, which is not, are not effective ways of really learning material. So that's, that's the way I would have had that discussion, but I never did. It never cropped up. Thank you. But it might. You're right. It might. But again, the reading is not an assignable credit uh, score. It just informs me. Anyone else? Francisco. And please, please know that, um, you know, if, if you need me in the future, I'm available to discuss with you best practices later, or walk you through some of the tools at any, any time I can do a one to one with you individually or as a group, it's completely up to you, but I'm available. I uh, just live up the coast from you, so it's. Francisco has to unmute himself. Let's see, maybe I can unmute him from here. There he is. There he is. Thank you, Terry. Uh, perhaps you already explained it, and if you did, I, I apologize, but I did not understand how does the system know how long the student actually reads? How, how does the system know that the student simply doesn't put up the screen and then watches a video or mm -hmm. video games? How, how does the system measure the actual time of reading? And I agree with uh, Roger's comments with regards to forcing the students to read online when they most of them prefer to, to read hard copies. Um, you know, well, first of all, remember that Revel is not an e-text. Okay, it's not, it's not the long chapters that we're used to thinking of in an ebook. And that, that changes the way we think about what they prefer. Actually, my students did prefer this because it's really an interactive, they're very short incremental pieces of information with an immediate interactive activity for a student to do. And therefore, their reading is not these long periods of time that they didn't like with an ebook. They much prefer to sit with a book. But this is proven over and over very effective that we give them short pieces of incremental learning and immediate application. So we're looking, we're looking at that spacing, retrieval spacing process in the brain. Um, so I don't have any complaints with my students about this and reading it exclusively online because again, it's not those long chapters they're having to read and digest. It's just very short pieces of information. So I, I got away from thinking of this as an ebook, and I think of it as a content delivery system that's akin to their learning styles. Um, and as far as timing how much they, they just time how, how long it's open, and certainly they could go to another site and have that up on another tab. But since I'm not grading how long they're actually reading, <clears throat> that just informs me if a student says they're engaged with it and I see that they're not. Um, I'm not grading that, but I am looking at their scores on the quizzes. 
And if the scores are going down or not doing well, or they're not participating in the little online quizzes in REVEL, um, then I know that they're not reading correctly or reading productively if they're using their own textbook. So they're welcome to get, um, you know, a hard copy of this if they want to. None of my students do. They don't, they don't, they're fine with Revel. They do well with it. Um, I didn't, I have, the past three years, I'm trying to think if I know of any student that bought the uh, reduced price hard copy and they didn't, you know, they all used Revel. You know, it's a very I, different design than we're used to yeah. thinking of in terms of e-text. The, the, the timing uh, issue, it's uh, can uh, uh, bring about uh, uh, difficulties. Uh, I've been teaching online for a number of years. And uh, at the beginning of each semester, we have to verify attendance. And sometimes uh, online students don't uh, complete any of the assignments. I want to withdraw them or notify that they have not attended and they have used as their argument, look at my time online, and they have like 87 hours. Of course, they just put the online platform right. there and, and do something else. I don't, um. Yeah, and I don't, I don't use Rebel for their attendance. Um, again, you have a learning management system, so I have my students do an attendance assignment in Canvas. For instance, my online students have to make a comment according to our rules, they have to do some kind of an assignment within the first three days of the course to be attending in that first week. Um, so I use something in Canvas for that. Uh, and again, I don't use Revel as the overall environment for the student. It's just delivering content to them in a way that works to get them to master these concepts. I'm still the one that's going to assess their overall mastery of the course. And I have a Oh, I'm sorry. I think it would be a good idea if we could show them what the students see um, when they go into Revel. Sure. Yeah. You want me to show you that? Sure. Okay. That'd be great. So let me go up here and pull up the class again. And you know what, maybe, uh, Terry, it'd be great if you could pull up a, a table of contents and maybe the group can tell us if there's a particular chapter you'd like sure. to see. Sure. Let me go into, I'll go into their, um, their course that I created. So table of, de detailed table of contents here. <clears throat> so this is your text and your chapters. Yeah, what um, chapter do you all want to dig into? Any, any, any ones that, that uh, jump out? Let's look at chapter six, Rome, Urban Life and Imperial Majesty. Awesome. Okay, these would be, you can uh, expand it so that you can see all of the different modules in there. Any particular module you want to jump into? You know, Terry, why don't you take it from the top so they can kind of, like, let's walk through one chapter so, okay. they, so they can see it from the beginning. So you direct me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then also just keep in mind that the students can download it as an app. So they can, um, once they log into Canvas initially, then um, their second time, they can download the Pearson Rebel app and they can read offline so they don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi. And there's audio as well. So we'll, we'll walk you through what the student experience is gonna be like. Yep, because there's a lot of tools here beyond just the text of the book. Correct. So this would be their chapter. So it's the same content as the print book, but it's just delivered in chunked materials, being as we know that's how students are learning best today is just through snippets. So they read a little bit and then they'll do a little bit. So we'll get into like an interactive or um, a panorama. Um, there's Close some great right now. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. And as we mentioned at the top, they can use it on any device. So if you'll notice there's arrows sort of in the middle right and left of the screen, that's also because they can just swipe if they were on a mobile device like an iPad or their phone, which we've done a lot of um, focus groups and um, more and more students are wanting to do their work on their phones. And they can increase the size, they can change the display setting. Revel was designed from the ground up with accessibility as a, as a forethought 
uh, making sure that it was accessible to all different kinds of learning capabilities. You have the audio here. And I've heard from a lot of our students that like that use the app that it really works well for them. Um, for instance, on larger campuses where they're walking and they suddenly are no longer in a Wi-Fi zone. They don't lose the reading that they're doing on Revel. Um, as soon as they go offline, they're still able to read and, and um, move through their content. Yeah, and I know of um, professors that have downloaded the Revel app and they can listen before going into class. Yeah. If you are interested in brushing up on anything, you can just plug it into your Bluetooth while you're driving to campus. So you can sort of see that these are small increments and then something immediately that catches their eye and asks them to do or change up the way they're thinking. Now you'll notice it's very distraction free. There's not a whole lot of these things that we see in a lot of textbooks with way too much visual distraction. And this was something they did a lot of studies on that really fascinated me as a learning science professor um, that you know making a distraction free environment does help prevent students from opening that other tab and going to Facebook when they're working on this. They tend to stay more focused and less distracted. Right. And just to kind of piggyback on what Terry's saying, part of that design um, is to have more of a muted white, so it, it reduces eye strain, and to have more white space or breathing space um, as well. So as you can see, that was a very small amount of information, immediately followed by a self-check of their knowledge. So they take their little quiz, they get immediate feedback on how well they did or did not do, and again, you can adjust the point values of this. And then they begin another short module. So it's entirely designed around the idea of incremental reading and learning with immediate application and incremental retrieval practice. What did you just read? Apply it. What did you just read? Yeah. Apply it. And then this is an example of like a true to scale icon. So they can click on that six foot figure icon. Terry, if you want to click on it. That way, um, you know, they're trying to imagine themselves in a true to scale format. If they were in the museum, what would it actually look like as far as depth? So that's um, an area where the students can really interact with the, the figures. So just to be clear, the Revel modules contain the same content as the text. So students who are just using the physical text and students who are using the Revel module would still be doing the same amount of reading, right? Every, yeah, every author of the text within Revel has authored the Revel text. Say that one more time. Every author who has authored the Revel text, for instance, there in your case, authored the Revel text, including every interactive that's in here. So every author that's used to, to write a Revel text makes sure that everything that's being offered in here, including those, those um, like we just saw a, a, a to scale um, statue, that's something that Sarah approved as one of the interactives in his text. So the text is not identical then between the Revel module and the physical Sayer text? It's not identical to the large books that Sayer, no. Right, so the content is embedded inside of Revel and it's broken down into sections inside of Revel. So if you'll notice here, we're in 6.2. So in Revel, there are no page numbers. Um, so when you're referring or referring to page numbers and your syllabus, you may just want to refer to section numbers instead, um, because that way if someone's using Revel to read versus someone um, reading on the print book, that way they can just go right into the section number and it would be the same versus the page number. So it sounds like students using the Revel modules would be doing less reading than students just using the print text. They would be doing less reading, but it's it. They're getting the same principles based on what 
Dr. Sayre believes is important to glean from that particular module. They're not going to be reading lengthy pages like they would be reading in Sayre because the interactives that he has chosen take the place of some of that text reading. Does that make sense? Yes. So they're going to be journaling here instead of reading about something. I can follow up with that. If you want more detail behind that, Sam, I'll, I'll get back to you on that, the exacts. So um, also you can highlight and take notes in Revel. So um, as a professor, you can highlight and push notes to your students or students can color code their notes. So students really like this portion. Um, they can print out their notes. Now we can see that it's shared to the students and we'll show you the student view in a moment. And again, you have another interactive. And again, they're doing some retrieval practice here and are levering some of the things that they've read before. So it's really just keeping them engaged instead of flipping through a static page on a print book. Um, so they're watching videos, they're doing interactives, they're doing quizzes if you assign them. Um, so they have short little section quizzes and then at the end of the chapter they have a chapter quiz as well. So the chapter quiz is around 15 questions and then these little section quizzes are um, anywhere from three to five questions. And the students really like the quizzes. Like if you look at all of our efficacy studies that we've done, they actually say, wow, like I'm surprised that I like the quizzes, but it forces them to, to really learn. Versus again, just like dozing off or, you know, so it keeps them engaged. And I did want to say that professors in our courses still have the opportunity to uh, assign a full text beyond the uh, basic textbook. So if, for example, I want to teach the Odyssey, I'm going to have my students read whatever translation I select of the Odyssey, and I will be having um, a, obviously, a series of uh, exercises and uh, discussions based on whatever that full text is that I assign to my students. And as a professor, I would never have assigned every page of reading in the main text anyway. Um, Terry, I think, can you unmute? Looks like there's a couple uh, people that are muted that wanted to speak. Let me pull down in here. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I'm gonna have to stop sharing for a second to see that and mute all. Yes, it sounds like Dr. Jones already addressed it uh, to some degree, but I think uh, one thing that might be helpful for future iterations of the Revel course will be to have the full text of the book available uh, as well as the quizzes. I'm very grateful for the different uh, options, uh, having the quizzes and the interactive uh, assignments and so forth, but I'd also like the students to have access to the full text, and maybe they do um, in the, when they go into the chapters. Is that, is that correct? So the full text would be delivered right in the print version that students can purchase for $19.99. Okay, so, so it's not available online then, like when they click on, for example, Dean Jones had the Romans uh, section, they would not have access to the full chapter that the print version does. Is that correct? Mm, well, we'll get back to you with the exact, right. like, what is okay. missing, right, Naomi? I mean, I don't right. know how we address that, Naomi. Right, we'll, we'll follow up with you. It's my understanding though that it's it's just sort of tailored. It's not like it's missing whole portions or anything. It's just sort of tailored to, to uh, fit this design to break it up 
purposefully and to integrate the media and everything. Um, but we'll get back to you on the specifics on any differences between the pros in Revel and the printed um, parent text, if you will. But yeah. it would also help, and I know this is an issue with Amazon and others, uh, for that matter, to have like the page numbers correspond to the print. So I, I appreciate your pointing out assigning the sections rather than versus the pages, but it does come up uh, fairly regularly in most of my classes where students will say, well, I'm not following along as well because I don't have the page numbers that the other student has who has the print copy. So I just, I mentioned that for whatever it's worth and appreciate it. They'll, the all have, they'll all have the Revel version. They will okay. all have it. Right. And I, wanted, I did want to show you this too that I had noticed in your text. Um, <clears throat> let me go back to the assignment area. When you go into your selecting content, your particular text has some additional readings at the end of the book that are assignable. Um, so these are additional readings in SARE or uh, other places that you can augment or supplement with the chapters in Revel. Um, so there are different, and they, they align with the particular module number. So this is an additional reading on the Japanese myth that would align with module 1.2 in your chapter up here. So you can assign more reading if you choose to on Revel itself. Right. And um, Terry, since we were just looking at the student view, would it be possible, could you look at the, just show the tool, the other tools that they, the students have as well? The students, sure. Yes. So let me get out of this view and go to the student view. <coughs> And if any of again, you, uh, Naomi or Jennifer, if either of you would like to take over and show things, I've shared the presenter thing with you. You just have to use the share and you can do that as well. If there's some things you want to dig into that I'm not covering. Um, so this oh. is the student view. Um, and they have, we, we made an assignment. So they would start that assignment. They would see what's coming up due next. They've got an assignment due very soon today. Uh, the rise of the culture and they know they haven't done anything they know what the total assignment is worth um this right. tells them again and reminds them to look, download that app which they really like tells them how many days they have remaining until the assignment is due and they can start right here or they can jump into their content at any point the book is theirs uh, the rebel text is there so they can jump in and out of the content anywhere they'd like to but one of the really nice things is if, for instance, they had read all of chapter one, when they hit continue reading, it will tell them and take them to chapter two. Um, it, will, it will take them back to where they left off if they want to use that. Again, they can jump in and out at will, but this reminds them where they left off reading last. Now that notebook function that we were talking about, remember we just made a note and sent it out to the students? There's their notebook. Um, you, I wrote the note to them, you're going to see this again, and I highlighted that. They will have all of my notes. So as you go through customizing the text to suit things that you see that are important, or you might want to augment it with a URL, or say, please read this in addition. Those notes will appear in the student's notebook here at the, through this tab. And they can create their own notes as well, but they will have your notes in order of the notes that you created. They'll go to their scores here and they'll just see their grades as opposed to the big dashboard you saw. And there are some additional study aids for them that allow them to do other things with chapter one to help their study. They have flashcards, matching, and practices that they can do on their own. These are not assignable or gradable per se, but those are things that the students can use to give themselves some extra, um, extra help with the course. Anything? Yeah, yeah. I just want to. I just want to mention too, with the notes, you know, we know a lot of students come into this week in study skills, so it's, it really makes it a lot more efficient way of taking notes if they're highlighting. Oh, snap. Oh, Naomi, I think you froze. Naomi froze. Yeah. I think we have someone wanting to come in the room. Just a moment, let me let them in. There we go. Sorry to be on a test or be on some kind of assessment you can make you can choose to make a note and share it with your class and then it's right there at the point of when they're reading it which would be very different than if they were 
actually reading from a printed book. Um, right. Earlier this semester, we did a focus group um, at Miami-Dade uh, College um, um, for a, for a uh, psychology course. And we were showing some students and trying to get their feedback. The, the faculty, they were curious to see what the students would say about Revel. And when they said, so you mean I have the readings from the book, I can highlight it, I have these tools, the flashcards, the matching, and it creates a notebook for me, why would I need anything else? Um, and so that's where too, I, we, I just feel like with, with today's students, this is something that kind of fits along with the way they study and beyond just the reading, it gives them a lot of tools to really help it to make it fun and to help reinforce their learning. I'm sorry, Jen, did you want to say something? Um, no, you wrapped it up. And I think <laughs> one of the up. things too that I want to mention about the reading and, and the looking at that time on task. Um, yeah, it, obviously those times are not going to be dead on accurate for everything, particularly if a student is reading supplemental readings or reading their, their hard copy text. But it does let me know in ways I didn't know before, which of my students have engaged with the reading. Um, and that's important to my knowledge. Um, before I had, I mean, I could assign two chapters in a hard copy book, but unless I tested them when they walked into class, I had no idea if they had even read it. At least this way I know with a good percentage of my class, I'm informed when I walk into class knowing that my students have had a passing glance of the information before they get into class, which makes me feel better as a professor. But yeah, it's not something that I use to grade them on their reading. It's something that I use to inform my teaching. Okay, thanks Terry for um, digging deeper into that. I'm gonna um, take over to uh, share my screen to show them the instructor resources. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, where did I go? I thought I was signed in. I guess not. So as I'm signing in, um, please reach out to me or if you want to um, instant message me through the chat right now. Um, if you all have not gotten a chance to get into your Revel account, if you're having any troubles or anything, um, let me know. But you should have all received an email on how to access Revel. It would be coming from Andy Como um, at Pearson.com. Um, so when you're inside of Rebel, Rebel is really just the one-stop shop for you and your students because all of your instructor resources are going to be here as well. Um, so how many of you use like the PowerPoints or Test Bank from the publisher when you're preparing your course? Do some of you use those resources? No? Nobody? Some people. Okay, I got some yeses, some noes. So let me just uh, take a, a quick peek into that. So when you're in your Rebel course, um, you click on that thumbnail icon and you go to your resources. So this is where you're going to download your PowerPoints. So if you want to upload those to Canvas, you would do that there. Um, your test bank, if you choose to to use the publisher's test bank, you could use, um, what I recommend is using the My Test. My Test is great. Um, so you have an additional sign-in, so you would log in through this link with your same username and password, and you could create those higher stakes assessments. Because um, remember, Revel is just low stakes assessment, making sure that the students um, are doing the reading. Um, so any higher stakes, you could use this tool. It's really nice, so you can drag and drop the questions. Um, creating your own test, and then you're able to upload it directly into Canvas um, once you do that in my test. So definitely um, take a look at that. And again, we'll follow up with the secondary training um, for anyone that wants additional help with that. Over here, um, you guys were talking about additional reading. So it's going to show you this is a nice um, list of just to show you where additional readings are within Revel. Um, so that'll list all um, additional readings other than 
just what um, Henry Sayer has in there. So download that. Um, this, even though it says coming soon, it's, it's already here. So this is going to show you where all of the interactives, videos, and images are for SARE. Um, so if you click on that, um, you're going to get this document. So this is a very nice detailed document to show you um, per chapter where you can find the widgets. So here's a video. Um, here's an enhanced image um, for those interactive figures. Here's your map. So it breaks it down um, how you guys can use this into your, in your classroom or if you're teaching online, um, you know where to find all of these um, interactives and images for you to either make sure your students are paying attention to when they're reading on their own or you can also pull them up and show them in class. So use that um, to your liking, but that's a great resource to have so you know where all of the interactives are. So that's called the Detailed Chapter Resource Guide under your instructor resource folder. And we also have a sample syllabus. So you can download that, um, that is available now. Again, even though it says coming soon, it is available. So you can take a look at that with just some different ideas on um, getting your students ready for Rebel. And uh, this is just an additional link to our instructor resource center. Um, but in theory, everything is here. So. Once you're in here, you're all set for your instructor resources. Okay, they do have to remember that uh, if they're looking at a sample syllabus that we have a master syllabus that requires, does not require a particular set of readings right through a book, but it does require certain subject matter that, it, that that's what the course has to cover. So um, when they look at a sample syllabus, they need to make sure that whatever is adapted into their course uh, is uh, reflects the master syllabus for the course for the university because it is part of a, a general education program. That's just okay. a reminder. Perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, so those are all of the instructor resources. So um, when you do download this handout here, um, for example, if you wanted to see like where one of the videos were, say if you were going to go into the classroom and you wanted to show a video, you would say, okay, I think here's a video under section 22.3. So I would go into my table of contents and go into 22.3. And then over here, um, you could find the video and then you just create a quick highlight. That way, when you're in your classroom, all you have to click on is the highlight and note section. So for example, if I wanted to show this in the classroom, I would just highlight it, um, take a note. Sorry, I'm on my screen. Um, And then you could go, sorry, that was, um, here's the video. So all of our videos have closed captioning in them. And then you'll notice the time frame on these videos. They're um, gonna be five minutes or less. So all of these videos are embedded in the narrative, making it very easy for you and your students to engage in the different ways. So if you wanted um, to show this in the classroom, you could just highlight it, take a note, And then you go back to your um, highlights and notes here. And it's all going to be listed here. And then you could just click right into it. And then it's going to bring you back to the video. And because oh. this media is so rich, one thing that we've seen is also a lot of faculty that like to use it as a teaching tool, too. So you know, when you go through Canvas or if you just want to go through here directly, if you're meeting with your students virtually this summer, um, whatever format you're using, this might be an idea to kind of comb through whatever you're, you'll be covering to kind of pull out some of these really dynamic and rich assets to help to bring the subject alive as well. 
Um, yeah, and I just wanted to quickly so highlight the, among the most popular subjects for the audio portion. Um, you can speed it up, so students really like that option. So the entire book is going to be read to them. So that's good for students with disabilities or students. Um, if English isn't their first language. Um, so it really kind of hits students um, in any best way that they're learning. So in, let's um, go on back here to assignments. So some of you noted that um, you may not want, you know, some of the students may want to read a physical book. So then they could just come into here and do the quizzes. So they don't have to read in here if you don't want them to. So they would read in the book and then they would come in here and then they would see, oh, here's a quiz worth 15 points. So they click on it. And then they would um, see the quiz. Do you want me to show you what the quizzes look like? Yeah, okay. Yes. So they read a little bit and then they'll be brought to that section quiz. And we try to make it as easy as possible by having these preloaded for you and then all you need to do is check a box to, you know, to, to choose it, to assign it and then publish it. Um, but you can also, if you wanted to make some changes, you can edit them as well. Okay. All right, so the way the, the questions work is if they get the answer right the first time, they would earn three points. If they don't, then they would get another chance to then earn two points and then a last chance to earn one point. So three, two, one, that's the way the system's set up, but you're welcome to modify that. And then you'll notice if they get the answer incorrect, they would get a consider this, and then they would be encouraged to go back to section 2.1 to read it, to then come back to earn the two points. So that way they're not just guessing and they're actually earning the most um, possible points. Um, so you would just click that. Submit, and then I would go back, I would say consider this. So I'd go back to read and then hopefully I would earn two points. If not, you know, stay la vie. But that was, that was me just guessing. So hopefully your students wouldn't do that, right? The idea is they would go back to read. So those are all, um, that's just a snapshot of what the quizzes look like for the sections. So those are, um, again, anywhere from three to five quizzes per section. But then the chapter is going to be worth longer, the end of chapter quiz. Oops. Sorry. Trying to go back. All right, I don't know if you can see on the bottom. Let me scroll down, yeah. So you can see the end of chapter quiz is worth 75 points. So there's more questions there and they're worth five points maximum versus the section quizzes are worth three points maximum. So again, modify it to your liking, um, use it as much as you'd like or as little as you'd like. Um, just start with baby steps, but the idea behind it is just really encouraging your students to um, have the content available to them on their app. They can listen to it, they can read it, they can watch videos. So um, really engaging um, in the material in a different way. And then also when you do assign um, these quizzes on the bottom, you'll notice this is called your assignment ribbon. So that way students, when they download the app, they can actually get a push notification on their phone um, that'll tell them um, that they have an upcoming assignment due. So just like we get Instagram um, updates and stuff like that, they would get a Rebel update showing them that they have a Rebel quiz due. So it's a way for them to stay on top of their assignments. And again, this is all going to go into Canvas, which is what we're gonna talk about next um, on how it's gonna be delivered to your students. Before we do that, are there any other questions that you feel you have at this moment that we could help? Yeah, pertaining a question. Yeah. The the notifications you just mentioned when it comes in for the students, does that come in 
just as from the app itself, or for example, you know, when we get notifications on our phone at times and they come in as a text, can they get them in that format as well since students are always on that text format as well? Is it both or is it just through the app? It's like a push notification, right? So when they download the app, um, it'll say, do you want push notifications? And then they click the box and they would click yes. Um, so I don't think we're there yet with the texting, um, but I do like that. I will give that feedback. Yes. Um, okay, so let's um, move on to the next portion where we're going to share with you how your students are going to get access through Canvas. Um, so Missy, um, the executive director, will take it away. It's just before, Jen, we have some uh, Gary in the chat is mentioning that he was wondering if you should have already received the information. Uh, Gary and Sam haven't received anything yet for their um, credentials for Revel. If Andy has already sent it or if she will be. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let me follow up. I'll write that down and I'll um, reach out to you. So that was Gary and Sam. Okay. And anybody else who hasn't received their credentials? I wonder if you could send that to Susan Jones and then she could send it to all of us. We would, um, her, her email might stick out to us better. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and send it to me and I'll forward it to everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. Sounds good. And then if I don't get it, I'll let you know. Sometimes our email is not as reliable as we would like it to be, especially in the last two days. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens. Technology. Okay. I was sure I didn't have it, but I found it, so. <laughs> and Tony is well down. And Tony, okay. All righty, yes. But, um, and if you all have, don't have the print book, um, you can let me know that as well. And I'll be sure to mail you the print book. Um, I'm happy to send it to your home address so you don't have to go to campus. So just let me know on that aspect. I also still have a copy or two that I can have um, Barbara send out. So um, if you let me know, I've put almost everybody I've put that's teaching uh, Humanities One in the fall has received a copy. So Sam would like a copy. I, I didn't give his in the original passing out because he's not scheduled to teach that. And Tony, there's probably one in your mailbox on campus. I'll have Barbara send you a copy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so um, we have Misty on the line. If you want to talk a little bit on how over the last year students have been um, getting direct access. Hi everybody. Um, I'll keep it short. I know we've already been on the call for an hour, over an hour, so <laughs> I'm sure everyone wants to have a but um, so basically I've been working with Melanie Jackson and her team and what we do at Palm Beach Atlantic now is a program through your bookstore called Ballet Access where students are getting act on their digital content on the first day of class and it's built through their bursar account. So there is no need to go to the bookstore or have any physical purchase actually happen. They to their course through Canvas, they opt in or opt out based on how they would like to purchase. We do give a discounted price. It's 25% off the online purchase price that a normal student would have to pay through this program. So it is a cost savings, which is a great benefit. And we've got great pricing for your course. So um, students will be able to get started with Revel right away. Uh, so we did work with Melanie on that. We have several math courses, nursing, that have already gone through the program in the first year. And so now we're about to start year two um, and we're super excited. So I know it's a new purchase model. So did you all have any questions about this? Have you heard about access? Well, I, I can tell you that um, I'm being told that the students who are especially on uh, VA scholarships or um, scholarships, uh, the real advantage of it is it just comes right out. They don't have to get money or get reimbursed. It just gets paid when they, yes. when they get this textbook this way. And it gets paid in a way that's painless and seamless. 
That's a great point. Thank you for sharing that. You know, a lot of times with these discounts, with the online purchase, you know, anyone who was on financial aid or scholarships couldn't take advantage of the of this good pricing, and now everybody can. Thank you for sharing that. Um, did anybody else, is this new for all of you? I, you know, we have a lot of math instructors as well that have been participating. Okay. Jennifer, was there anything else that you wanted me to share around inclusive access? Um, I don't think so. The courses, um, the course will be delivered in July. So yes. um, as far as the professors, what to expect, they will basically open up Canvas, right? They'll see their course. And then the Revel link would be embedded inside of it. Um, because um, the um, LMS administration will be doing that for them, correct? Exactly. And so then you're just going to want to unhide, if your course materials link is hidden, you'll want to unhide that because students will access through the course materials link. So for now, um, we're going to, again, make sure that everybody has access to Rebel to play around with. Um, but the actual course that your students are going to use will be delivered through Canvas. Um, so we're going to follow up a second training. So we would love for you all to join again in July. So that way um, we could show you how to implement it directly into Canvas, answer any other questions, um, and make sure everyone is set up and ready to go. Um, and part of that is Kendra. I think Kendra joined the call. Kendra is your um, customer success associate. So she's gonna um, help us do that. Are you on the line, Kendra? I am, yes, hi, nice to meet you guys. Yeah, so be on the lookout for emails from um, Kendra Howard, from me. Um, and we'll, we'll send those emails to Susan as well so she can forward those uh, pertaining to your Rebel accounts. Um, what else? Any, how is everybody feeling about it? Good. Awesome. Um, well, Susan, do you think there's anything else we needed to cover? No, I, I just think there's a lot of opportunity. There are two volumes, Sam. There, um, I think there's a, a lot of opportunity here to, um, in case we are on the ground in August and have to make some kind of adjustment later on in the first semester for whatever reason, I, I think that this is something that offers us a maximum amount of opportunity to make that uh, happen without losing students because they can go on and we can see what they're doing um, whereas they haven't always been reliable in many cases in showing up for zoom classes and so on mm. um, okay well um, thanks again, everybody, for joining. We'll follow up um, with an email and um, just kind of send you out some details about Rebel, what to expect, next steps. Um, we also have um, a plethora of videos to help you get started with Rebel. Um, so when you're on your Rebel homepage, you just go to pearsonhira.com Rebel. Um, and then you guys are going to all have accounts, so you click sign in, but before signing in, you'll notice that you have training and support tab right here. So this is going to give you links to um, very, um, very vast variety of these how do I videos. So any question that you have about Rebel, there's going to be a video for it. Um, so you're welcome to reach out to myself or Kendra. Um, but we have these great videos. So they're really short to the point videos to help you with anything that you may have a question on in Rebel. Um, and then LMS integration services. I guess you guys aren't really gonna have to worry about that. So that's awesome. We're gonna do the work for you. So all you're gonna do is open up Canvas. It's gonna be in there. So that's awesome. 
So really you have a quick start guide, implementation tutorials, and how to do my videos. Can, um, can you tell me how soon, I mean, we all have the Canvas tiles for the fall. So oh, how soon yeah. will that material actually be in there for people to work with? Um, so I was told that the course inside of Canvas will be available um, the beginning of July. Okay, we already have the courses. But I don't know okay. whether they've been loaded with students, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so students are still registering and all that now. So I guess when they register, they're going to see um, that their course includes this fee for their textbook. So then when they join Canvas, it'll be ready to go for them inside the Revel link will be there. Um, but as far as you all preparing your course, um, the Revel link won't be live until the beginning of July. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, we'll want to set up a second training um, mid-July. So that way we can um, get everyone set up. Um, when are your classes tend, like going to be starting for fall? They haven't changed yet, right? No, nothing has changed. The, the schedule is still in place that, that um, has been set. And as far as we know, that is the schedule, unless okay. something changes their mind. Yeah, yeah. I know some other schools just push back fall by like two weeks. Um, that's what Palm Beach State College did. They pushed it back two weeks. So. You guys are on pace. Sounds good. Well, definitely keep me in the loop on if there's any changes, but um, we're all moving forward and we'll deliver you the, the courses in July and then set up that second training for you all. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. We appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. So much. you. Thanks yeah. a lot. It's great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.